Hello everyone, another Trey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Resonant Rise 3. This is episode 12, and today I want to work on some mob spawners, because I'm tired of hunting Endermen all the time. So, first thing we're going to make is a grinder, just like we made before. And we're also going to want to make a few other things. Um, we're going to use powered spawners from Ender.io. And in order to do that, we are going to need a few things. First, we're going to need a soul vial. I believe it's called a soul vial. Uh, and it is made... If I can find it. This mod is huge. It has a million things in it. So let's type in soul... Is it vial? Yeah, there it is. Uh, so we're going to need some fused quartz and a solarium. Uh, we don't have the fused quartz, which means we're going to need some nether quartz. So we'll just take a bunch of that. So run over to our alloy smelter, put it in alloy mode, and we're going to need three, which means we're going to need 12 nether quartz. And that'll make us the three fused quartz we need. We already have the solarium. That'll get us our soul vial. On top of that, we're going to need the actual spawner itself. Now, one thing Ender.io makes you do when you play uh, the mod is when you break a spawner, it will give you these broken spawners. And the broken spawner uh, has a mob type in it. Um, we're not going to want to spawn cave spiders. We're going to want to spawn endermen, which means we're going to have to change the type of spawner that this is. And that is done through a machine uh, from Ender.io. Uh, I think it's called a... Soul, Soul Binder. There it is. So we're going to need one of these. We should have pretty much everything we need to get one of these going. Oh, we're going to miss a bunch of things, actually. Uh, so we need an Enderman head, a Creeper head, and a Skeleton head. So, Enderman head, Skeleton head, Creeper head. We're going to need a few more Solarium as well. Let's get some gold. And some soul sand. Go back to our alloy smelter. Throw those in as well. Uh, you may have noticed I'm really low on gold. That's because I'm trying to get everything together that we need to make our uh, hypercube down in our little central brain room for our applied energistic system. That hypercube is really resource intensive. I've been working on getting the parts for it for about four hours. Um, I got most of them. The biggest part is the 64K storage components that we need to make the, uh, the crafting components. Uh, and that takes a lot of diamonds. Uh, plus we're gonna need uh, engineering processors which require diamonds for the co-processors. Yeah, so it's, it's taken me a while. I will get it done. Uh, I wanted to finish it for this episode so we could throw it all together, but uh, I've already spent four hours doing that, and I want to get a video up, so we're doing this instead. So that'll make us our soul binder. We're going to take that, and we're going to add it over here with our other machines. Somewhere along this line, I think we're just going to pick up our painting machine for a little bit. Uh, and we're going to throw down our soul binder. Uh, we're also going to need the actual spawner itself. So we type in spawner, you'll see there's a powered spawner. Uh, and this is going to take some vibrant crystals and uh, Z-Logic controller. Vibrant crystals are just emeralds surrounded by vibrant alloys and valley vibrant alloy nuggets. Vibrant alloys are made in our alloy smelter with energetic alloy and an ender pearl. So let me get this stuff together and we'll continue on. Okay, 
So now we have our Z logic controller and our two vibrant alloys. We'll go back to our AE system. Bring up our powered spawner again. Uh, we're going to need these. So that'll use up our vibrant alloys. From emeralds. I don't know if we have any electrical steel. We're gonna need another machine casing. We do. Alright, so that'll get us our powered spawner. But a powered spawner by itself doesn't do anything. We actually have to put a spawner inside of it with the mob type that we want to spawn. So in order to do that, we're gonna take our soul vial and we're gonna go hunt one more Enderman. <laughs> While we're waiting for prime enderman hunting time, I am going to make an item real quick. Uh, it's called an ender pouch, and it is from the ender storage mod. This is the same mod that uh, makes the ender chests that we use to bring our items back from the uh, quarry. Uh, so I'm going to make one of these. I'm going to take it over to my ender chest. I'm going to shift right click on it, and that will match the color of the pouch to the color of the chest. And basically what this will allow me to do now is open up my pouch and it's connected to the chest. So now if I have ever anything on me that I don't really need to have like these uh, nether quartz, I can throw them in the bag and it'll be just like they were mined up. It'll put them right into our AE system. So we never have to worry about being full of items again when we're out mining. All right guys, so just over this hill, we seem to have an enderman. So we're going to take our soul vial, sneak up to this enderman, and we're going to right click on him and that will capture him inside the soul vial. It works pretty much the same as the uh, the reusable pokeball thing that we have. This is a safari net. So I'm going to take this guy back to base. So now that we have our enderman soul we can throw that in the soul binder along with our broken spawner and it's going to require 15 levels of experience to get this process going. I'm also going to throw our octatic capacitor in there. I actually borrowed it from our sag mill uh, just temporarily to make this go a little faster. Uh, I can use player XP or I can pipe it in uh, from liquid XP or things like that from other mods. Uh, but I'm just going to use my player XP. And that will begin to convert this into an enderman spawner. Now we're going to need to do one more thing. In order to combine that with our powered spawner, we're going to need an anvil. Just a vanilla Minecraft anvil will work, so that's what we're going to make. And we're going to take our anvil and we're going to put it in the same room as our enchanting stuff, just because that's where we'll mostly use it anyway. So I'm going to stick it over here on this side. Looks like an Enderman left us a present. And this is almost finished. I guess in the meantime I can go dump some of this stuff out. Actually we'll put our leather in our AE system just like that. Uh, I also killed a bunch of cows while I was out there waiting for the sun to go down, just because we're running a little low on beef. So I'll change this back into furnace mode and throw in our beef. So now we get our empty soul vial back and a broken spawner that is now type Enderman. And we'll take that over to our enchantment room. Broken spawner, soul vial, make sure they're in the right order. Oops, not soul vial. The powered spawner. And that'll cost 30 enchantment levels. So you can see this part's pretty enchantment heavy. So we'll take our powered spawner enderman. Now that we have that, we're going to need a few more things to get this rolling. Uh, this is a powered spawner, so it's going to need some power. So we're going to come over here. We're going to grab our conduits. We're probably going to need a lot more than that. Uh, and we're also going to want some uh, some way to transfer a redstone signal. So I like to use the Ender.io 
redstone conduits, the, uh, yeah, insulated redstone conduits. I believe we have some of those. Or maybe not, so we're gonna have to make some. So those are made with redstone alloy, which is yet another Ender IO alloy, and that's just made with redstone and silicon. Don't have very much silicon. So we're gonna grab a redstone. We're gonna get some cobblestone. We're gonna take our octatic capacitor back from the soul binder, throw it back in our sag mill, and make some sand. That should be enough to get us rolling. We'll throw one more in. It'll give us 26 silicon. I guess while we're over here, we can throw this in. So now put this in alloy mode. And we're going to make about nine, I think, should be good. So now that we've got our nine redstone alloy, go back to our ME system, throw it in, and turn that into insulated redstone cable. Like I said, we're also going to need some more conduits, so that's going to take some gold, some redstone, and some glowstone. Well, that's cooking up. Let's get this started. So this is what I have started so far. Uh, we are going to dig a hole right here. And we are going to put our grinder right here. And that is backwards. I do have a little door right here that we can go through. This is actually a carpenter's door. Um, which works the same as all the other carpenter's blocks. You can uh, retexture it with other blocks. Put our grinder right there. And up here is where we're going to want to put our spawner. Uh, but like I said, our spawner's gonna need power and it's, we're gonna wanna give it a redstone signal so we can turn it on and off. So as you can see, it's not working right now because it doesn't have power. Uh, we're also going to want it on active with signal so that when a redstone signal is on, it will be active. Uh, I'm going to take our enhanced energy conduits. I'm going to run them in here like this. And we're going to run it this way so that it runs over into our little maintenance room. this out a little bit more. The power in this room is actually running right down through the center of the floor here. So what I'm actually going to do is figure out where the cable is. So it goes right underneath this table. And I think what we're going to do actually is we're just going to run it straight down through here and down through the center of this little maintenance room. It's going to break our door, but that's okay. We can put it back. Uh, this grinder is also going to need power. So 
But I think the easiest thing to do will be to run it right down this path. System and we'll make some more enhanced energy conduits. So that'll make 32. That may be enough. We should probably get some more going in the meantime. Pretty soon we're actually going to have to upgrade all these conduits because these spawners use a lot of power. Especially when you give them the highest level capacitors. Which we're not going to do right away because our system just can't can't support it. These, these cables can only transfer 5000 RF per tick and we're going to need more than that. kind of block that I have here. Let's seal this floor back up. Yeah, and we'll do one of these here too. Put our carpenter's door back down. Put our blocks back on it. Uh, you do need a carpenter's hammer to change the type of door that it is, so I will get rid of that window, but I'm going to have to go back and get my hammer again. Uh, so now that that's done, we're going to need a lever. Yeah, it looks like we already have one. I'm going to take this lever. As you can see, the grinder's already running. They run by default unless you give a redstone signal, which we're not going to do because that can just run. Put the lever right here, and that'll connect up to the redstone signal. We actually might have too many. Yeah, we don't need that one. So that can go just like that. Now, that redstone signal is not a one, so it should not spawn here. Um, I'm really hoping that the spawner doesn't spawn in more than uh, this 5x5 five five room. If it does, we may have to rethink the layout um, because the maximum size of the grinder, the maximum, maximum effective area of the grinder is a 5x5. Five five. Uh, so I'm hoping this works, but I guess we'll see. Uh, I want to close this off with glass. And the type of glass that I'm going to use to do that uh, is actually dark glass. Dark glass is made with thickened glass and blackout curtains. So we'll make ourselves some blackout curtains. Ooh, actually we have a recipe conflict. That's not good. Hmm, so we're not gonna be able to do that right now. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get around that. Um, but in the meantime, I guess we'll just use 
a uh, different kind of glass, not quartz glass. Do we have any quite clear glass? It doesn't look like it. So I'm going to have to make some of that real quick. So now we have our quite clear glass. We're going to stick that right here. Just like that. Uh, we're also going to need some item conduits and a chest just to get this guy tested to make sure it works. So now that we have that set up, we should just be able to turn this lever on. Our spawner kicks on and we should start getting endermen. We want to be prepared just in case they spawn outside of that room. Now, the without any capacitors in there, that spawner is going to be pretty slow, but it's also not that hard on our power. So let's see what happens. We may need to raise it up one as well because that's only too high an endermen. Oh, there they go. Let's see if the grinder gets them. And we have ender pearls. Awesome. I'll let this run for a little bit just to make sure they don't spawn outside the glass. Uh, I'm also going to need to find a way to clear out this essence. I don't know if I want to save it or not. I probably will because it's useful for making enchantments. Oh, we got more endermen. Cool. Now, Endermen will drop a couple different items when they're killed. Uh, they'll drop Endermen heads, they'll drop Ender pearls, they'll drop Benicio essence, and they'll also drop uh, items from RF tools. And those items are dimlets. And dimlets are used for custom dimension creation, and there are a lot of them. Uh, but the only ones it will give us are the unknown dimlets. We have to actually research them ourselves. So I'm going to go get a couple barrels. I'm going to stick them right in front here. And that's where we're going to store these items. So let me get that together and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our barrels down. I turned off the spawner just for a second while we rearrange some stuff. I'm going to take this barrel or this chest and I'm going to stick it right in the middle here of all the barrels. Um, I'm also going to take out the ender pearls and the Venetio, and we are going to put that here right click with an empty hand ender pearl right here right click with an empty hand uh, they're gonna drop enderman heads so we're gonna want to grab one of those I don't know if they'll drop both of these heads or not. I guess we're going to find out. That's why the chest is there, just in case it drops anything we weren't expecting. I do have this barrel here as well, because I'm thinking there's one other thing they drop, but I can't think of what it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig out the floor here again, break our door again, I actually don't want to run the item conduits 
to the bottom because the bottom is where I would like to connect our applied energistics system. So instead, we're going to go down, we're going to go back here, and we're going to connect it through the back. I want to make sure these are set to insert. Now we want our chest set to priority negative one because we want that to be the uh, last place. We want the barrels to fill up before the chest. And this last barrel we're going to make priority negative two, uh, just until we find out what needs to go in there. That way the first thing that comes through doesn't land in that barrel. So now that that's done, we can actually run this straight back through here. And that'll connect up with the other power conduit there. We can close this in so we don't get any unwanted guests. Even though we have a uh, magnum torch, it's still good practice just to fill in all your extra unlit areas. I don't know if you guys can notice, but the sound seems to have stopped on my uh, jetpack. I'm sure it won't be there for the video either. in as well. well. I never did run the rest of the conduit. So we've got it up to there so far. We're going to run it this way. And right into the back of our grinder. Take that conduit off. Fill this back in a third time and turn. Well, we don't want to turn it back on yet because we still need to deal with the fact that there is a hole there. So what we're going to need to do is make some more of those conduit facades. So we're going to need five of them. means we're going to want to put our painting machine back down. So we'll pick our soul binder back up, put our painting machine back down again. Still has this double air capacitor in it and it's quite clear glass, but we're going to take that out. We're going to put in one of these cork blocks and we're going to throw in our conduit facades. That must be an explosion resistant. Paint in the painting machine, right click on a conduit to place hidden when a wrench or conduit is equipped. Hard and resist breaking explosions. Yeah, so that's just a better, more explosion proof uh, version of the block. So we're going to take these. I had a visual glitch there for a second, but we do have five of them. we're not going to be able to reach that one. There we go. Cool. So now we'll turn this back. We have an extra piece. Oh, I definitely put that back in the, in the painting machine. So we'll turn our spawner back on now. And we should see items going into the barrels. Wow, this does take a long time to spawn. So 13, 1, and 3. We're going to go make our... We're 
we're gonna go quickly make a another double layer capacitor. It has a hyphen. Yep. So that's made just like that. right in the wall, right here, and this should make them spawn much faster. Oh yeah, much faster. 15-1-3, so we got more ender pearls already. We get anything in the chest? Nope. It may spawn faster if we get rid of those torches. Let's try that. And that will make the light level 7, which is spawnable. It's still kind of bright out here towards the edge, but that'll be fixed once we get our recipe fixed for dark glass. So let's see if that helps. So we got more ender pearls and more manicio. And here comes the end of it. Oh, we did have one spawn outside of the room, which is not ideal. We did get an uncommon treasure. I don't know if they will drop those all the time or not. All right, guys, so we do have a functional Enderman spawner. However, it is using more power than we can provide it at the moment. So I'm going to take this double layer capacitor out and let that guy fill up. Uh, it will spawn Enderman slowly, but at least uh, it won't be eating up all our power. Uh, so we may have to work on another power solution soon, because uh, we're going to want more spawning rooms than just this. Ooh, we have an escapee. I may also have to push this... Uh, spawn or back one just so that it doesn't spawn inside the base uh, all i really have to do is push it back one closer to that back wall because it's solid back there so they won't be able to spawn inside the wall um just real quick before the end of the episode guys i also wanted to show you that i figured out a solution for the sheep farm uh, i actually have a layer of grass underneath fence instead of blocks there uh, that the sheep can't get to so that will always be grass even if they eat everything on the inside and then it maximizes the uh, perimeter that grass can grow inward from and it seems to be keeping up with how fast they eat it so that worked out really well and we have almost a full basic barrel of wool uh, but there you go guys there's our build for the day um, go ahead and give me a like if you liked what you saw and subscribe if you want to see more see you next time